Let's say that we had a cone filled with water and that over time water drained out of the cone at a constant rate until it was empty. And let's say we're interested in finding about the height of the water at various points and how it's changing over time, say at the end when there's no water in the cone, at the, in the middle somewhere, and also perhaps at the beginning when it's full of water. So we're interested in finding out the change in height with respect to time at these various points. To determine this, we could do a little hands-on activity. We could take a drinking cup from a water cooler, say, which is in the shape of a cone, and measure its height and measure its radius. And let's say we found out that the radius was three and a half centimeters and the height was 10 centimeters. We could then use the formula for the volume of a cone, which is one third pi r squared h, and plug in our values to determine its capacity. So when we do that, we'll put in pi 3.5 squared times 10. And when you figure that out, it's about 128 centimeters cubed. And let's say we cut a little hole at the bottom of the cone and measure how long it takes for the water to drain out. And let's say that value uh, was 63 seconds. That tells us that the change in volume with respect to time is equal to 128 centimeters cubed divided by 63 seconds. And because the level is declining or the water is draining out, that becomes a negative value. This value then represents the rate at which water is draining from the cone. Now let's relate this rate to that of the change of height of the water with respect to time, which we were talking about earlier. Okay. Let's come back to a cone with a certain radius. R and a certain height H. And we know the volume of this cone is a one-third pi R squared H. We notice that volume is dependent on both the radius and the height but we're only interested in, in the height. So what do we do? Let's see if we can find a way to represent volume in terms of just height rather than both height and radius. Well, we can do this by coming back to our problem. We know that at some point water will be draining out and will be at a certain height. And let's say at this height here. And this also, water will also form a cone and this cone will have its own radius and its own height. And we know that the radii and the heights form right angle triangles which are similar to one another. We can rewrite them down here as follows. So here's the cone, right angle triangle with the R and the H. And we could write this level for water here, R and H like so. And for similar triangles, the ratio of the corresponding sides are in the same proportion. So we would know that the blue R to H, the ratio of the blue R to H, would equal the ratio of the gold R to its height. We also know that the initial radius of the cone was three and a half centimeters, so we can put that value in there and substitute it in. And we also know that the original height was 10 centimeters, so we can substitute that value in. And we can cross multiply to isolate the radius variable, which would give us the following. So we can see that radius and height are related in the following way. And we can substitute that value for r into our volume 
uh, formula. And if we did that, we would get volume equal to one-third pi 3.5 h divided by 10 squared times h. And if we work that all out, substituting 3.14 in for pi, we'd eventually en end up with volume equal to 0.1282 h cubed. And this gives us what we want. We've expressed volume, made it dependent on just one variable, and that is the height. Now we can go ahead and differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to time, and in that way relate the change in volume with respect to time to the change in height with respect to time. All right, let's come over to a new workspace here and finish solving our problem. We know that the volume is equal to decimal 1282h cubed. And when we differentiate with respect to time, and we can use the chain rule here, we would get the change in volume with respect to time is equal to 3 times 0.1282h squared times the change in height with respect to time. And this gives us, multiplying out the 3, 0.3846h squared dh dt. Now remember, we found that the change in volume with respect to time when water was draining out of the cone was um, negative 128 centimeters cubed per every 63 seconds. So we can substitute that value into our equation here. And when we did that, we would get negative 128 over 63 substituted in for the change in volume with respect to time, which would give us negative 2.03 equals 0.3846h squared dh dt. <clears throat> and what we want to do is isolate the dh dt. So we're going to divide both sides by this amount here, which would give us negative 5.28 divided by h squared. So this tells us the rate at which the water level is declining, and our units would be centimeters per second. So let's say we wanted to find out now how fast the water level is declining when the height of the water is half the original height of the cone. Well, at that stage, we know that the height, because uh, it was 10, 10 centimeters high for the cone, we know that the height would then be 5, half the original height. And we can just substitute that into our uh, relationship here. We would end up with negative 5.28 divided by 5 squared would give us dh dt. And solving this, we'd get negative 5.28 divided by 25 is our change in height with respect to time. And that would be about negative 0 0.211 centimeters per second. And that means when the uh, height of the water is 5 centimeters, that the rate of change of height with respect to time is negative 0.211 centimeters per second. And it's a negative because the water is declining. Now we could continue to solve for additional values of height. For example, if the height was uh, a quarter full, or if it was almost empty, or if it was full, we could determine a rate of change of height with respect to time. And there you go.